Hey guys, welcome back to another recap review. This is Married to Medicine, season eight, episode two, graduation snub. And so the episode starts off, remember last episode, they were at um, Dr. Damon's birthday. And so Toya, you know, been drinking her tequila, her Patron all day, and she feeling it. And she like, well, you can put me out then, you can put me out then. So let's just see, this is where we start off. So <clears throat> Toya gets up, leaves Anila. You know, Anila is trying to be introduced to us. We don't know how we feel about her. Um, so she goes to Damon and is like, I'm tired of your wife. She go to, Cur I'm tired, not Curtis, uh, Cecil. Cecil, I'm tired of your wife and they fake makeup session they had in New York. Um, and she tired of they shit, period. Toy is up to here with it, okay? And then Curtis is just like, don't bring that over here. You know, the men are always just very mellow and straight to the point, very chill, like they all cool. Girl, Eugene pulls Toy and said, have you ate yet? Cause you're not yourself when you're hungry. Okay, not the Snickers commercial. Simone are still sitting there after Toy walked off um, with her drunk A. Um, Simone admits that you know she she has been harboring some still some feelings still from you know the past seasons and um you know heavenly of course brings up the elephant in the room you know that Simone and Jackie friendship and this is again like I love Dr. Simone like I love Dr. Simone I've met her in person like I really like her but I'm not even going to be biased and say like she's not being a little childish because she states that she was hurt because Jackie said that Dr. Heavenly and her were just equally as important to her. And she really felt some type of way about that because she feels like they have 20 plus years of friendship and her and Heavenly don't have that long history. But again, in my first uh, video, it doesn't matter like you can think about when people get married you can be with somebody 10 years and then it don't work and y'all it's just not it but if you go and meet somebody in six months y'all are married and y'all are together 30 years 50 years so that whole time time is does not constitute you know that loyalty or you know like oh you gotta choose sides like y'all are like 50 years old like that should not be a thing yeah that that just bothers me because y'all are not in high school um simone she can still have heavenly as a friend but you feel like because y'all have been friends so long that she needs to she should have had your back and cut heavenly off but they actually have built a relationship and you have to respect that or you just don't want her jackie as a friend that's just kind of how i see it jackie tells simone that she wanted her to correct buffy and she didn't and almost like jackie um felt like simone was enabling buffy saying you know like that simone i mean that dr um jackie meant those things she said about buffy you know in a malice way about being infertile simone is just like how dare you question me like you know me i was telling buffy that you didn't mean anything like you know in in ill intent she gets up she walks off because you know simone when things get rough simone gets up or she yells and she's whatever so she walks off and she feels like she's being um bullied i, I mean not bullied i don't like to use that word because that's just where it's so overused she um feels attacked by she said three against one comment down below first of all comment down below um i want to say didn't simone take up for like she told buffy that it she she didn't think jackie meant that like i want to say that that's what happened but i can't really remember but comment down below if y'all remember that whole did did simone take up for dr jackie or not like because i can't remember and i'm not going back to watch it and so simone states that she will never mess with dr heavenly again because she's she's a good snipe straight good um just because of the heart like how many seasons have we been going back and forth 
between this whole Cecil and Dr. Heavenly drama on Twitter and Dr. Heavenly, you know, Cecil talk. Like, how about we just all don't talk about nobody because then Heavenly gets mad. So it's just like, it's just like, um, it's just escalating. It's going zero to 100 really quick. But you know, when Heavenly gets mad, she starts saying shit. So she was like, with your dirty ass. <laughs> and I just started laughing. <laughs> And so, of course, they're trying to pull them apart. And it's just, I guess it's a high tense. Like, this is like the first time they've all been together, I suppose. And maybe they shouldn't have done it at Dr. Damon's birthday party. But I guess, hey, we just got to pop it off. Damon is so sweet. He's telling Heavenly, calm down. Like, black people are under attack. The revolution will be televised. You know, he is just, you know this is this is minor heavenly you don't have no reason to be upset like this is just gone basically it's gone too far bring it on down bring it on down and anila and simone walk to the um bus or the car that they had and toya and eugene are on there and of course toya as soon as they get on is like do i need to fight a bitch period toya ready to, toya drunk in the ass need to sit down so eugene gets off the bus because clearly he's gonna go talk to the fellas or whatever so we'll back to you. so um we get toya talking to our boys i love the scenes with the women in their kiddos and she talks about taking the boys out of the school that they were in because it was very white and very white washed and they were not addressing the racial unrest in the country and my thing is I am glad that she took them out of that school because we're in Atlanta. Like, there's so many more, you know, there's so many schools that you can put them in. So she did take them out and put them in a school where they were very comfortable with the kids participating in, uh, participating in Black Lives Matter. They, they were speaking up against um, racial inequality and all of that. So I, I do applaud Toya for doing that for her boys. And I, I also, at first I was like, mm, she should be telling them how much she's paying but as a teacher like these kids take that stuff for granted so i mean i'm not mad that she's told them hey this twenty five thousand dollars like i need y'all not to waste my money because my students i'm in public school and it's a waste it's a waste so maybe that'll give them some perspective because they seem pretty smart they know the value of the dollar so maybe they'll know like and they'll take their education serious and then um, him saying, oh, I'm going to have to get a new gang, you know. I think she, instead of him just saying, oh, them should be my friends, um, maybe she should tell him the context of what it is. Um, or maybe a click. I don't know. I'm not even going to get into that. That's a whole nother, that's a whole nother video, y'all. And then we get to Dr. Tech, Dr. Contessa and Scott. And they are going to a building, we already know, like, where they're about to open up a facility together. Dr. Contessa finished her program. And I really like them because you can see that they're trying to process their relationship and they're not acting like everything is sweet. Um, so they're opening up this business together. They're going to have to get along, like... And not only on a business level, but on a personal level, on their one-on-one -on -one marriage. Um, that they are going, in order for this business to be successful, they have to ground themselves in their marriage. And I'm so here for it. And um, Scott was saying, should they go back to counseling? He thought that they maybe could work it out on their own. I'm all for counseling, you know, that's what I'm practicing. Like, that's what I'm in school now is to get my licensed professional counseling. So I'm going to always advocate for counseling. Even when you think you're okay, I, depending on, I guess, what type of counseling you go to, um, especially with talk therapy, I think it could be an ongoing experience just because new issues can arise. And like they said that, um, you know, every time they think that it's like a roller coaster. So they think they, they may have fixed something, but then this, it's like a, it's that ebb, uh, it's ebb and flow. Like there is it, that push and pull and really, it, and it's work. Um, and I do like that Dr. Contessa said, just because if you ignore it doesn't mean it's not real. 
I think that is so true. A lot of couples try to ignore, you know, the problems. Oh, we have this business. But yeah, the business can't be successful if y'all not getting along and y'all can't even run the business. It's going to be closed down within six months, baby. And that's not going to work for anybody. But um, I do like that they're, you know, taking the initiative like we need to work on us in order for our business to be successful. Okay, so we get um, Dr. Heavenly. You know, I'm talking about how she had to close her office. I think she said for two months. And then, no, we didn't get Queen, aka Funky Dineva himself. Okay? I remember um, when he talked about getting those two teeth fixed, you know, when you're not, I don't know what it is about black people when they get their tooth missing right there. I got, I got mine so I can talk my shit. I got mine. I'm getting my girl fixed. Okay? Um, and she just um, was like, you know, that he's a controversial blogger, you know, and I love Funky Dineva. Like, I was sitting and put on his videos. Um, he was just very wise, and I just, he just, when he talked, aside from him being really goofy, he speaks that truth. Like, he, he definitely, like, he's that guy. I like him. Um, and Heavenly's like, you know, he can't be talking trash with them them, te them two teeth missing. Um, and I do like that, you know, she discussed, like, you know, the practices that they use. Because I got my braces in May. So, that the, I was nervous. Like, oh my God, like, I'm finna, they finna be in my mouth. Like, I'm finna get COVID. Um, but I've been doing my orthodontic treatment throughout this pandemic. And I've been fine. Then we get to um, Anila and Carol, Quer, Quer, Carolyn, I think that's how you pronounce his name. Um, and we just kind of get introduced to her and how she um, was introduced to Toya. They have the same builder. Um, they have two little kiddos. That little boy is so cute. I love kids. Um, and she talks about they've been married seven years, but don't get it twisted because she did have a career. Like, she's just not any stay-at-home mom. You know, she was a global forecasting analyst, kind of like Devil Wears Prada. And um, right now, she's a blogger because she's a stay-at-home mom. But, of course, like, bloggers make money. Not me. Y'all don't watch my videos, but, you know, <laughs> I do this for fun right now. But when people do this as their full-time job, like, they bringing in some 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 coins like from Instagram, all of that, like being monetized. Um, and she just said they clicked right away. And I don't know, and maybe it's just me being, I don't know. She said they clicked right away, and I'm thinking that's because when Toya would kind of post on her stories, like living in Alpharetta and like her neighborhood, it was very white. Um, Toya was the only black person. So I think with Anila, it adds some ethnicity to the thing, you know? So of course, like, hey, she got some color to her skin. Like, let me be friends with her. Like, let's hang out. So I think, I, I wanna say that's why they were able to click better in their neighborhood. Um, well, that Anila is moving to that neighborhood. So um, it was, you know, it, it kind of just says that reality, like, you know, that he's a doctor and when he got home, I forgot what doctor, that kind of doctor he said, they said, you guys can put it down in the comments. But when he gets home, you know, he getting undressed in the garage, like Dr. Eugene in the first episode, um, put on his robe and go in the house. And of course, you know, they have little kids, so they're going to run up and, you know, she has to stop them. And, you know, that sucks. Like you can't immediately, you know hug your kids and so he goes and takes a shower and then he comes back out and then they can hug him and it just sucks you know um hats off to the doctors and the nurses our healthcare providers because y'all need a break like i'm so like i i advocate for the vaccine because and i got my first dose because y'all have been working tirelessly like hats off because i'm complaining and i'm a teacher like and i'm over it but the dedication y'all have you know not being you know if you have to quarantine being away from your family and all of that so i thank y'all so um we get to the tailgate which is for dr simone son michael he is so handsome he has grown up into a handsome young man and I love the relationship that Cecil and Simone have with him being very transparent, 
very real i had um i grew up with that like where you could talk to your parents about sex um drinking whatever um and you didn't have to be ashamed about it um they just were gonna give you that real so i really appreciate that and it's just like so crazy michael is a nice looking young man um and she's holding this tailgate at her office her um in the parking lot because of covid so i do like um hey then they had to get barbecue baby eugene dr eugene so i'm gonna need you to get some new scrubs like i don't know if y'all on hard times i know y'all put this house on the market you know we don't know what the situation is but my brother do we need to start you go find me for some scrubs because them scrubs is a little tiny, my bro, my boy. I know, and everybody, I ain't even talking about cause everybody gained weight through the through the COVID quarantine. So we just gonna get some big clothes, bigger, big scrubs, cause those look a little uncomfortable, my brother. Um, and then Anila shows up, and Simone is like, oh, you know, she was right by my side at Dr. Damon's birthday, and she's all right with me. And I'm like, she's trying to get in good. She's trying to. Did she? Is she a fool on there? Did she? Did she get a get a um? Is she on the cover? I think she's on the cover. Um, but she's trying to get in good. She's trying to secure her bag. She's trying to secure her spot on this show. So she's trying to get in good where wherever she can. But you know what? She was there for Simone, so I'm gonna let I'm gonna let let have. She didn't invite Jackie, which um, I can understand why she didn't because this event is about her son and not about drama but i don't think that jackie would have came and started any drama but it definitely would have been tension um so it, it did kind of suck that dr jackie wasn't there um because dr like they've been friends for 23 years so she's seen michael grow up so, um toys so how they're both holding grudges and like I, I i said last in the last video they need to sit down off camera and try to work things out and then maybe bring it to the camera but they're both very stubborn so it looks like we're not gonna get anywhere and but again they're not gonna worry me with this jackie and simone drama all season i can't take it i can't take it we did that with the potomac wives can't take it so while they're at the barbecue for michael's graduation party we go to jackie and curtis and curtis is in there cooking some chicken and air fryer baby if you don't got an air fryer what are you doing with your life you need to catch up bring it um and of course dr jackie is like oh baby they turn me on baby when you in the kitchen cooking okay dr jackie um um and you know i did mention that i'm i was sure that dr jackie you know watched michael grow up let alone she mentions that she was the one that delivered him so she's the first person to touch him um so it really did hurt her that she wasn't invited i do like i like I, I i see both sides i do feel like simone should have invited jackie jackie i think is mature enough to have came and you know not caused the scene but I also see the other side, but all the other ladies being there, that maybe some drama would have occurred. Oh, Toya is talking to Simone and Anila and, you know, really saying like, she really wants Dr. Jackie and Simone to be friends again. And, you know, um, it's almost like, you know, them her aunties and, you know, you want your aunties to get along. <laughs> uh, then we get to the end of the episode and dr simone is walking up to dr heavenly's house um which dr heavenly's house is a beautiful she has a of a tour of it and dr y'all y'all sleep on dr heavenly but um she's like this 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 bottle can serve two ways it can be a peace offering or i can just hit that with a bottle i don't fight i don't argue i just that with a bottle y'all remember that song <laughs> um and you so you know they're kind of doing some fun shade back and forth um you know she was like have you been she uh heavenly asked them all has she been tested and she's like yeah but you know i haven't done no testing because you know i wasn't invited um because you know they had dr damon's event of covid testing and then she was like, no, because you wishy-washy. She's like, no, I ain't wishy-washy. I'm just firm. So, you know, they had that little fun shade. 
and she's saying like she I, I don't I'm confused maybe y'all can help me out in the comments she said that she feels like she can repair the relationship with Heavenly, but not with Jackie that she's been friends with longer. So I'm, I'm, I'm curious to know, did something happen behind the scenes that we don't know about? Like it has to be something else there. Something is not being mentioned. Um, something may have happened because I just don't see that, you know, her and heavenly being friends being the reason why now they can't be friends and that situation that happened last season i just don't see that being enough to ruin a relationship so i'm very curious to know like is there something deeper do y'all know the tea comment down below because i'm i want to know um dr heavenly admits that this her beef with simone stemmed from when that episode um where Mariah's like, ah, we all know about Dr. Damien. Do you? I have the receipts. I have the receipts. And she felt like, so mom, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm tired. I gotta finish my homework. Um, she, I got three hours to finish two assignments. Three assignments. Oh my God. Okay. But I'm, I'm gonna get this out for y'all. So make sure y'all like it up because your girl is sacrificing an A for this video. What's that? Squirrel thinks that Dr. Simone was like more on Mariah's side and you know Dr. Heavenly and Mariah don't get along at all so um Dr. Heavenly admitted you know they apologize and we'll see I feel like I feel like we're gonna keep bringing this stuff up I'm tired already I'm exhausted I'm asleep um Simone does state that her and Jackie's relationship at rock bottom and when you hit rock bottom that means you at the lowest of the lowest so I really want to know what happened what's really going on so again thank y'all for watching this is the recap review this is an okay episode it wasn't like eh, it wasn't like oh my god um but I did tell y'all it's gonna be consistent so I love y'all cousins be safe out here in these streets